Hello and welcome to another review. This time I'll be reviewing this 2011 Audi Q7. I'm probably going to do the exterior portion really quick because uh, there are wildfires probably uh, a couple hundred miles away but the smoke is really bad and I do want to protect my lungs. And since this is the S-Line Prestige package, it does have the optional 21 inch wheels and they look great behind these brimble brakes, the six piston front, four piston rear. Uh, the gas mileage is 16 city, 22 highway. It's got front and rear parking sensors, backup camera. The things you kind of expect in a vehicle of this caliber. Let's make way to the inside. And I shouldn't have to go over the smart key if you're familiar with it. Touch the key, touch hand on the back. This lock and I'll you know what I'll cover it anyway just in case so I have the key outside the car right now press once lock give it a second touch pan opens up lock and that's on all four doors as well each door has its own sensor which is handy if you have small children and you don't have to open the driver's door first you can just go straight to any door you like the hatch even with the doors locked the hatch all you do is touch it the little soft button up here and to close it and like I said the car is still locked closes and you get a confirmation beep to confirm the car is still locked We'll go in here and I'm going to film the inside. I'm just going to go over a quick overview of some of the features. So we have traditional start engine and a separate button to turn the vehicle off. There's also a key hole here. So if you want to turn the car on that way you can. It's not your traditional turn and hold wait. It's all electronic. You just turn and release and the car starts up. This is mostly how I start the car is just do this button here just pressing that and it starts up it does have a cd player single cd a couple of slots for sd cards if you want to upload music to the hard drive has a valley button uh, has a extra glove box button and you can see how the glove box is softly damped here we have a couple pockets I keep some glasses here in mine. There's a second pocket. You know, small children, it's nice, nice to have a little extra violent bag, hand sanitizer, some wipes. There is two cup holders, one here and the second one here if you have a passenger. And there are cup holders and each of the doors as well, front and rear. So in total, there's, um, let's see, one, two. Actually, there's plenty more actually I, I probably recount them all over again but there's a lot more in the back as well it's got memory seats it's got shout locks power folding mirrors heated mirrors blind spot monitoring and I like about this blind spot it is the um, even with 2011 this blind spot system is advanced in some of the uh, 2017 cars that I've driven, 2018 cars, because it will give you an advanced warning if cars are approaching quickly from behind, even if they haven't reached your blind spot yet. Um, I feel that does have its advantages because even though the car is not your blind spot, if they're coming up pretty quick, you'll get that advanced warning. But your passengers won't be able to see that light. And when the car's approaching, you just get that soft light. That's all you have. But if you activate a turn signal with the blind spot, with the with the light on, indicating there's a car in the blind spot, you will then get three bright flashes, and that will catch your attention. No matter, even through this tent, I will get um, an indicator to tell me that you know there could be either a fast approaching vehicle 
or there's a car already in my blind spot. It's got um, automatic headlights, fog lights, and these headlights are fully automatic. And what I mean by fully automatic is this car is smart enough to determine what the ambient light is outside. However, if your wipers are on, say for example, you have rain sensing wipers. So the rain sensor is detecting rain. Wipers are on and the system would activate the headlights. And if it's still bright enough outside, these ambient lights in here will not illuminate. It'll keep everything off which because I can still read it. So everything else inside the interior will still be, as I say, off. But just the exterior lights only. It, the car can separate what needs to be happening at certain times. So I'm going to start it up here. As you see, I have um, the b and sound system. And the sound system really, really kicks because it's a thousand watts and the bass is probably the crispest bass I've heard in a car. It really is it, more felt than I would say heard, but it's there. And it just is the clarity of the sound system. It's probably the best, one, one of the best ones I've heard in a car. Here. And this is, it's got paddle shifters. Um, I would, this is not a DCT transmission by any means. This is when Audi first switched to the A-speed, which they're using now. It does have adaptive cruise control, as well as four collision warning. And this is your standard like cruise control menu. So if you have the cruise activated, there'll be a um, ACC available here, and it'll tell you when it's on, your set speed, and if there's traffic in front of you. If the vehicle is detecting traffic, you'll see that indicated traffic here. And it gives you kind of markers to know where your distance is set, and how close you are approaching to that vehicle. Once you become within, within that certain range of that vehicle, uh, the Audi can apply brakes to maintain that certain distance. If, for example, the traffic does slow to a stop, the Q7, this Q7 can actually brake itself and come to a complete stop. And for, like I said, for 2011, I feel like this was really, really advanced. Um, if traffic is stopped more than uh, I would say like three seconds, you have to then resume the cruise control yourself manually and the car will then resume speed. It's got heated and ventilated seats, has four zone automatic climate control, and since it has the warm weather package, it does have the four zone climate control as well as the ventilated seats and the deep tenant's panoramic sunroof. So you get the panoramic sunroof as an option, but with the warm weather package, it darkens this is a really deep tint on this and just to show you here I'm gonna open the sunroof and to open it you just turn the knob to your desired uh, level of openness so if you just want to all the way open you just spin the knob all the way to max so which I'm gonna do now and the sunroof didn't open and I can turn it more manually to because there's a deep tint you just hold it there and it'll open all the way but this is the preset here which is supposed to that it stops at and I think that's Audi setting that thinks that is probably the best to minimize the wind uh, buffering at highway speeds to close it just put it back in the closed position and I tilt it up if you want extra ventilation and the rear has its own as well the, the rear Unfortunately, doesn't open, it just tilts. So you hear it. And as you get a red light, indicate, tell you that it's actually up because it would be unfortunate to actually leave that up in a car wash. And I'll climb back there in a second and I'll go over it with you guys in more detail. Reading lights it does have this feature here. And you have this for extra light blocking. Even the driver has a grab handle. And what I like about this, this feature here, when I show you the child lock, it's either left or right. So if you have a child sitting on the left side or on the right side, you can block out their, not only their door handle control, but their window control. So it takes care of all that, just like that. 
so they can't open the door they can't roll the window down and but if you have an adult say for example on the right side they can then still have the full function as needed if you have two children back here lock both and it not only blocks out um, not only blocks out their window and door controls but since this car does have the climate control settings in the back they can't operate it 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 blocks them out all right so next i'll cover uh, an optional feature and that is audi's adaptive air suspension and with this feature uh, you can not only configure your ride quality but also adjust the ride height and it's not a new feature to certain cars i know uh, Range Rover has been using it. Um, you know, the Grand Cherokee has been has an optional feature, but I do like um, just the functionality of it. Like such so as uh, I'll start at the top and work way down, but there's lift mode, which has a certain max speed of 25 miles an hour, and that raises the vehicle up to its max ride height, and that's for clearing um, obstacles. And there's off road mode, which has a the speed rating of 50 miles an hour and it's a little more it's just like similar lift mode but except it helps suspension articulate more similar to like a fj cruiser or a jeep wrangler has that that flexibility of the suspension and then there's comfort and automatic mode which it lowers the car back to what you would think of a normal ride height uh, with the comfort being the dampening is more floaty more cushy and automatic is more Kind of an everyday what you kind of expect for an audi q7 without the air suspension my favorite mode is dynamic and dynamic actually lowers the car so i think it's more because of the the stance the car has it lowers it down to a, a lower ride height and the way it rides it rides more like a sports car it the it does have a firm ride and um, it kind of gives the car almost like it's impersonating a sports car but it obviously the laws of physics apply you know this is a 5,000 pound suv it can't corner like one but it does help the driving it does make it a little more enjoyable to drive and each one of these settings for lift and off-road they only have certain speeds so lift your maximum speed on lift can only be i want to say um i might be in wrong in manual but i want to say it's only the 20 miles an hour off-road mode you can only go to 50 miles an hour once you exceed those speeds the car then defaults automatically to the automatic setting comfort automatic dynamic i should say comfort and automatic they automatically keep the right height this at this level once you exceed 80 miles an hour or 75 miles an hour for i would say 10 20 seconds the car drops to a lower right height at highway to help with aerodynamics and highway stability uh, this check here this check is just to kind of go through the systems and it just tells you everything that it covers right now there aren't any malfunctions but it goes through this check that's the brakes that's the windshield washer fluid that's the gas that's the oil battery there's so many different electronics on here and so many different monitoring on here there's different sensors there's sensors to know if the vehicle is hooked up to a trailer it can tell you if the trailer lights are out. So if you hook up the trailer, you have an indicator to tell you if you have a trailer light out. So if you have a brake light out on a trailer, it'll tell you. It, it, that's how intu intuitive this car is. So here I'm just gonna go through some systems of the MMI. And keep in mind, this is a 2011, but um, just keep that in mind for technology purposes. So to access any needed functions, you just hit Basically, if you want navigation, information, car setup, radio, media, um, this is just like a phone book, and telephone functions. By activating any one of these, um, typically sometimes it gives you a soft key where it takes you to hitting one of these quadrants and it gives you more functions. Hitting setup under either one of these, either nav or radio, media, car, takes you to more functions. So right now I press navigation. And you can see I have, um, I can zoom, zoom all the way out, three miles, four mile radius. Then you have, you know, this typical navigation. Um, each one is still different. This, this, this right now I'm in the 3D. See if you hit information, it tells you different things on the road. So if there's 
you know, object right there is object on road. And this may not be on your exact path. It just kind of gives you, I'm not sure, it's a radius of the area, all the hazards, information, just, just information, you know, basically what it's for. The only time it'll interfere, and I've seen it come up, is if there's a car going the wrong direction down the road. No matter, even if I'm listening to the radio, it would override everything and it would show up on the screen. And that, you know, that, that is a, an event where it needs proper attention because I mean, I could be traveling on that road. So I think that's, that's a good feature because if there's a vehicle going the wrong direction on the road you're, you're currently traveling on, I mean, you would like to know that. You kind of be on the lookout for that vehicle. So right now I'm in the radio and when I talk about the soft keys here, each one mirrors, you'll see is actually these. So it's presets, it's tuning, sound, band. I'm going to the car function, and we already know where the air suspension already. But here you can hit AC on the right, and you can choose automatic recirculation on or off, and you can sync up the rear, or all, all the zone. So hit rear operation. See how it gives you the rear. And now I can make an adjustment for any one of the rear seats. Well, dimming review mirror, and these these rear view mirrors um, dim as well as the side view. So the side view mirrors kind of mimic what this mirror does, and it really helps out block the light. As you can see, the speaker grill has a lot of speakers. And the back seats. So I'll cover the back here. All right, let's get this all centered. So here I am in the second row of the Q7. And I did do tint on all the windows, even though this car does have the privacy tint for the back, I did add another layer of 20% um, for all the windows. So this is normally when it's clear, but with the 20% over this tint, it does make it almost limo dark and I think I can't roll the window down to show you and I can't get out of the car you know what I um I locked myself into the car because I forgot I left those switches on so hold on one second let me get okay so you can see just how deeply tinted this car is. And with the warm weather package, you do get the sun shades for the rear. So it can pop up with this and you get one on the very back glass as well. You do get plenty of privacy. From the back seat, um, you can see how much room I have. Like I said, I am 5'8", and I'm sitting behind myself where I normally sit in the car and I have plenty of room to sit comfortably and I can add more room by scooting this chair back and now if say for example there's a larger adult back here um, they have room to kind of stretch out I mean there's plenty plenty of room Let's see and this just show you the climate control See here. There we go. Heated seats. So I got two 12 volt outlets back here for the passengers. There's cup holders, and there's cup holders in each of the little, just like the front. The center console drops down. There's a cup holder here as well. Oh, like an ejection. Wow, look at that thing hide. That probably surprised somebody hitting me for the first time. Look at that. Never really played with this before. Um, center console can drop down individually if you want to pass something through. And you can see the third row is folded down. Uh, the splits so many different ways. Let's see, and then we'll go up to the top before we move away to the back third row. 
and this is just you get a manual sunshade back here and the passengers in the back also get their own window controls they have um, the option to tilt that window just as like the front now the front is the only one that still gets the light because you know the driver should know when that seat is activated that um, but the passengers back here have full control um, of of the sunshade and pressing it once can stop it anytime if you want to partially open or fully open all right so now we'll go back we'll go to the third row and I'll show you I'm gonna leave the video going so I'm gonna show you guys just how how the, the way you get into the third row actually before I do that let me get the cargo mat out so later in the video I'm gonna cover just how many suitcases I can fit back here like I did in the Corvette video because you know this car obviously people when they haul stuff uh, they want to know how much room and you know I could spit out the, the figures of the you know the cubic feet in space but realistically I want to show exactly what that means and what the size that translates in suitcase and cargo so here I'm going to show that the Q7 can easily accommodate um, two the three large suitcases and two smaller suitcases and for maybe four passengers traveling together if you limit each passenger to one carry-on and one personal item it should be no problem with the third row it will be limited to maybe just one suitcase and one smaller suitcase and with all seats folded flat um, you can easily accommodate a 65 inch tv it is at the edge but the trunk can close and it can fit so we're in the back right now and the, the rear seats are down and this car by being a 2011 did not have a power folding um, third row seat so we had to reach back there manually and i can see the advantages of getting the power because right now i gotta reach across pull it and use my muscles to pull it back just because i'm laying on my stomach and my feet are off the ground so now that that's done, got that locked in place, and that's secure. Let's grab the other one, and this is a stretch. I tell you, it's a stretch. And that's locked in place. Now you can see how much really, really realistically how much room you have. Just enough room for a cooler, one, maybe two suitcases, but like I said, full timing. Um, with the third row up and trying to use this this little bit of cargo room it's not much and like I said it's deceiving looking at it from the outside of the car because you think that it would have a little more space it does have a 12 volt outlet here and you see this button this is if you have a heavy object to load into the vehicle you can lower the vehicle just by pressing that button and let me only the doors have to be closed before I can do that. Just for I'll show you just how that works. So pressing this and the rear end drops down for better uh, loading so you're not hurting your back as much lifting something heavy in the car. It stays that height until you actually start moving once the car goes above five miles an hour it automatically raises itself or you can actually hit this button again once you're done and it would then return back to its normal height setting this feature that helps out the one thing i do wish this um the audi did have some type of warning sound even just one, even just a couple of beeps but when this gate opens, it opens with uh, authority and then it closes just the same. So I'm going to show you back. I'm going to hit the button and I'm going I'm to jump back. It starts closed. You, I mean, so you hit the button, you got to step back. And if you're if you're opening the gate, this the same thing. Hit it, it, it's coming at you. There's no there's no delay. No delay. So I'm going to climb back to the third row like I told you guys. And, 
And a third row, to activate the third row, is something similar to what you do in the car. Just pull up like this to like a coupe. Slide it forward. There's some kids toys that I probably lost. I climb myself into the third row and pull it back. And I am, I'm, I'm, it's tight in here. It is tight. There's some cup holders if you want it. And this is actually where my cargo um, cover sits, the locks in place here. So they use it as a small little cup holder. There are a couple air vents. And I guess to help with the claustrophobia back here, you do have a little sunroof, a little window. Because right now I'm feeling really claustrophobic in this thing. It doesn't feel as roomy as that 2017 Audi I reviewed. And to get out, similar fashion, pull up on this and you roll it forward and you can get out. And let me try again, because I know with the other Q7, um, I actually was able to pull the seat back. So let me see if I lock it back at a different place. If I pull it forward, let's try to get in again. Climb back here. Let's see if I can get myself more room. Um, even with the seat pulled forward, I still feel like there's not a lot. I'm feeling like I'm, I, I can't tolerate this no more than, I'd say half hour. All right. So hopping out. Okay, now we're back outside. I'm gonna fold the third row. First thing is, so drop the headrest. You don't wanna drop this headrest, otherwise you'll get stuck later. Then you can drop the third row. It's easier to let them drop than to try to stretch it down later. And you have your room again. So now we're gonna go to the outside. I'm gonna go over the lights so you guys can see. And new for 2011 is when they first switched to their LED daytime running headlights. Which I would say headlights, but they're more just the accent lights. Uh, this have headlight washers, which is with the prestige trim. Uh, this light here is a cornering light. So depending on if, you, if, the, if the switch is in the automatic, uh, left or right turn to the steering wheel at low speeds eliminates a light coming out this direction or that direction to help you see on um, certain corners, some dark corners. And like I covered my other video with the uh, 2018 Q7, um, it does have um, the lights that it know if the hatch is up and it will activate these lights. And these, these lights here would act as now the primary brake lights, turn signal, tail lights. So by opening the hatch, you'll see just how they disappear. And now those lights are eliminated. Then if I close the hatch, you'll see how it switches back. Just like that. Those have front and rear fog lights. I'll turn those on. I did switch the front fog light to LED. And to turn the fog on, you just pull the knob once for front, two for rear. So these fog lights are, I put LED bulbs in these. 
something to try to match the, the headlights as close as I could. And I'll show you the rear fog lights. And the rear fog lights are here. You got each one. And if you don't know what rear fog lights are, rear fog lights are for people with coming up behind you to see um, you in dense fog. They look like brake lights, but they're not because these are the brake lights here. So you had the tail light, and if you look how the tail light looks, the tail light, it looks pretty dim. It doesn't look very bright. But you look at that fog light, that fog light just looks like a bright light, it's really bright. And when you're driving in dense fog or heavy snow, that's where you really see um, the, the advantages of it. Um, I do sometimes come up on cars on the road during just regular night driving, and I don't know if people don't know that the roof lock is on, but you'll see some cars, like the brake lights are on, like, especially like um, Mercedes Range Rover, you'll see people might accidentally turn them on. But um, that's typically the only use, only time you should really use it is uh, like heavy, low visibility times, um, snow, fog, dense fog, just so people can see it at, at a far distance. And I'm going to go back actually to show you just how you see how bright that those lights are and I don't know if you can see but this this how the tail lights you can really you can barely see them especially in daylight but nighttime fog definitely you would see it and one more time with the lights this time now I'm showing the LED turn signals which again from 2011 up to 2015 is where they had the LED turn signals. And like I said, I did have the Laminex covers over the lights. I did with, um, I think I did the color is gun smoke. I didn't want to go too dark. I just wanted to get rid of the bright red. All right, so just give you a quick overview. This engine is the 3.0 liter V6. I apologize how dusty it is. Uh, it's just been for a lot of, a lot of smoke. I have to clean the engine uh, prior to uh, trying to do this video, but um, just with the, the traveling and stuff in my commute. It does have an extra, since the battery is located under the, underneath the driver's seat, it does have a place where you can jump start the car, a little positive terminal. And supercharger here, I know this, there's an upgrade for a smaller pulley and a tune for this car. I was supposed to bump it to, uh, I want to say it's a 60 horsepower bump, but uh, I think you go from 333 horsepower and I want to say close to or right around 400 horsepower. And this engine, if you have an S4, Audi S4, with the B8 uh, generation, you're familiar with this engine, it's just exactly the same. Uh, but I do feel that with the Q7, they did make it a little more muted. Um, doesn't sound anywhere near like an S4 or an SQ7. It's just very, very quiet, and I, that's probably one of my drawbacks with the car. I just wish, even even for an S line, they should have made it have a little more, a little more growl, a little more grunt with it. Uh, but it's very, very tame. I don't even have a supercharger. A very hint of it, and that's only if I'm in sport mode. concludes my review of the 2011 Audi Q7. If you like this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. Thank you.